Today, we commemorate the fundamental principles of press, press freedom, evaluate the challenges faced by journalists worldwide, and celebrate the essential role journalism plays in fostering democracy and transparency. On this occasion, we'll delve into the critical issues confronting journalists today, from lack of insurance in conflict zones to the threats of censorship and intimidation Journalists often risk their lives to bring us the truth. Press freedom is under threat in many parts of the world. It's crucial uh, to protect journalists and ensure they can work freely and safely. Throughout the program, we'll hear from journalists, experts and advocates discussing the importance of press freedom that will enable the people to hold government accountable and promote transparency. This and more will be our focus tonight. Thanks for joining us. I'm Yukaria Clinton. Welcome to Nigeria Today. Now, joining us uh, via Zoom is the managing director of the news agency of Nigeria, Nan Ali Muhammad Ali. Thanks for joining us on Nigeria today. Well, thank you for having me. Good evening, viewers. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Also joining us uh, here in the studio is our own NTA veteran broadcaster, Muji Makunjuola. You're welcome to Nigeria today. Thank you very much. And is, is, uh, should we say happy uh, <laughs> press, <laughs> well, press freedom day? day. Best. <laughs> to all of us. <laughs> to all of us, yes. It's good to have you. Thank I'm you. so excited to have you, really. <laughs> I must say that. Thank you. Thank you, Kerry. Okay, I'll start with you. Uh, can you share your thoughts uh, about uh, the World uh, Freedom Day, what it means to journalists around the world? Well, I, I want to call it a day of... Um, reflection mm -hmm. how far we've gone what's um, mm -hmm. I mean what are the gaps inherent in the practice mm -hmm. and um, for some is it a day of fulfillment uh, uh, is it a day that we still need to fill all those gaps mm -hmm. when we reflect on where we are we have come from but as, as a Nigerian journalist mm -hmm. if I may narrow that in I feel extremely uh, proud to be a practicing journalist. Why would you say this? From inception, it has been, the, 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 the practice has been in the forefront of national development. When we pre-independence, mm -hmm. there were the voices for the people. Post-independence, the Nigerian uh, uh, journalists have played their part and continually played their part. Uh, but in a sense, if you look at it historically, uh, there have been too many ups and downs that we we as practitioners need to look inside and say to ourselves um, are the standards still the same and if the standards are not the same what, what's responsible for that okay yeah we'll things. come to that in, in a short while but, yes. but let's go to uh, mr lee uh, uh that join us via zoom now today's uh you know uh celebration i will call it that is uh the theme is a press for the planet journalism in the face of environmental crisis in your opinion how apt is this uh, theme well, uh, it's quite apt given what's happening worldwide, the environmental degradation, global warming, and uh, related environmental issues. So the theme couldn't have come at a better time. Though uh, other uh, globally challenging issues are also in the forefront, like uh, the conflict worldwide, the like increasing conflict worldwide, but then conflict has been an endless issue uh, worldwide. But this year's theme couldn't have come at a better time because of the increasing uh, global concern over environmental issues. Global warming has become a threat. The increasing depletion of the ozone layer is a source of concern and uh, issues relating to the environment. Some people point out the recent flood disaster, even in 
UAE as a pointer to increasing environmental challenges and uh, the issue of global warming. Thank you very much. Now back to you, uh, Muji. You were actually uh, going to the uh, point, uh, the place where I wanted to come much later, which is, you know, coming back to uh, Nigeria and the co Nigerian context, you know, having, you know, practiced for quite a number of years as a journalist, would you say that Nigeria or Nigerian journalists enjoy press freedom and to what extent? Well, I mean, how, what do you define as freedom? <laughs> like, well, definition would, you know, definitely be be different. But uh, uh, most importantly, is to have I mean and uh, you know, an environment that will enhance one's uh, practice. Mm -hmm. Well, it's been two age of the sword. One, yes, indeed, we have. Uh, we've come a long way. Uh, we, whether the society accepts what we do is another thing that we need to evaluate. Mm -hmm. And if they do, that's a plus plus for us. Mm -hmm. uh, the skepticism that we see over the years, oh, oh, don't mind the press, oh, the press, well, and the gain that we have, you know, we have to cope with um, um, misinformation, disinformation, and the rest of it. But i just like to add to what uh, my colleague, the MD Nan, just said, that the media has become an essential, is a strategic tool for development. If we're looking, and it's global, if we're looking at the environment, mm -hmm. like it says, uh, for this year's commemoration, I mean, it's Mother Earth. We all live in there. But the degradation has been something that has affected all of us, whether we like it or not. Um, places where you never would have thought it, it will rain and it will flood, like a place like the UAE, mm -hmm. The environment is saying to us mm -hmm. that Mother Earth is crying. We need to do something. And what is it that we need to do? We need information, good information, to be able to keep the environment alive, to keep it going. And that's where the uh, media comes in. And that's where the practice of journalism is, is an essential. But whether we take it seriously is another thing. Whether us, even as practitioners, when you invited me to this program, I did say that uh, uh, my lens today will not just be on what the society thinks or what they think about it, but are we looking inward ourselves? Are we trending? Are we tracking events as they happen? Can we report from the point of knowledge, which is important? So when you put all of this together, we are the eyes, supposedly, and the ears of the society. How much of these are we doing? Like now, I'd like to turn the lens around. Okay. The general public, uh, how, wh what kind of language, what kind of message are we feeding them with? Because, I mean, if you go and speak too much of grammar somewhere, the message is lost. So do, do we start now looking at how best to communicate, how best to tell the story, particularly the world that is unfair to everyone? So who tells your story best? None like you. Mm -hmm. So um, I would say that even as we commemorate today and mm -hmm. look, look at the, uh, the pros and cons of uh, being in the media, we must also, also ourselves mm -hmm. be far more educated, educated in the sense that we're tracking trends, we know what's mm -hmm. happening, we are able to ourselves, mm -hmm. you know, go back like we always have a post-mortem mm -hmm. on the practice. Mm -hmm. Now, for me, it's, I'm very passionate mm -hmm. about nature, and I think that the journalist or the media should be in the forefront of this. Mm -hmm. We should, um, when you talk of freedom, the freedom to be able to get an expert. Okay. Your camera should open the window. Your, your microphone should open doors. Your pen should be, should be trusted in the sense that what you are saying is not exaggerated. It, it's, it's the real facts. Okay. So when people you. go to you and say, oh, you carry her, oh, when it comes to this program, she gives you a little facts. Thank but you. Are we there? <laughs> Thank you. I'll have to. I agree <laughs> if I keep listening to you. <laughs> cool. Now, uh, uh, over to you, uh, Mr. Ali. Uh, uh, Oji has, you know, drawn a very important, uh, uh, you know, uh, issue here. She talked about uh, journalists being, you know, very, their role being crucial to national development. 
But in doing this, there's, there's been a lot of misinformation, disinformation out there. That brings me to my next question. How responsible have we been as journalists in carrying out our roles, you know, in the society? Well, I would say it's a 50-50 kind of thing. We have these days, especially with the dawn of digital media, I would say, I would say the media space, we have missed the good old days of responsible journalism. Uh, listening to Mojima Konjela, I would say she belongs to the old school uh, of journalism where truth was sacred, where truth was sacrosanct, where the pursuit of truth through the fine uh, refined journalism, where everything is filtered from gatekeeping, from news hunting to gatekeeping, to broadcast, uh, respected the norms, the ethics, to these days of citizen journalism, where uh, sensationalism has taken over facts. Fiction uh, is generously mixed with facts presented as the gospel truth. So I would say in recent time, journalism has not really fared the way it should be because of this idea of citizen journalism, where gatekeeping is um, neglected. Otherwise, I would say the media has been especially uh, in the forefront for the enthronement of democracy, for exposing corruption, for, for in the pursuit of the truth, in the good old school of journalism. But what we have mostly now, especially with digital media, is the advent of fake news presented as the gospel truth. And with the impending dawn of artificial intelligence, I dread to imagine what the future portends. We are likely to see the death of real journalism. What we are likely to see in the coming days is uh, uh, well, anything but journalism, where, like I said, fiction and facts are generously mixed and presented as the gospel truth. And the dawn, the, the dawn of this brand of journalism has actually, because it's uh, <clears throat> responsible gatekeeping, even the news hunting itself, the news gathering itself, has, the, the rules have been circumvented. So what you see is that, like Moji rightly pointed out, we are in the era of disinformation. There is a remarkable difference between misinformation and disinformation. And we have a situation where journalists have become advocates. Advocates not for the truth, but for certain uh, uh, political interests. So I would say journalists, Yes, there are good old, those who are marinated in the good old school of journalism, like I said, where truth is sacrosanct, where the pursuit of truth was sacred to these days of anything goes kind of journalism. But still, it's not all doom. Uh, there are still those who are actually uh, of the old school, where you respect the fine tenets of journalism. So it's a 50-50 kind of thing. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Ali. This is still Nigeria today. Let's uh, take a short break now and listen to the opinion of uh, some Nigerians on the issue uh, of this course. Don't go away. It's meant to draw attention um, to the issues affecting journalists um, across the world. And in this case, the World Press Freedom Day, uh, being celebrated in Nigeria, will go a long way to draw attention to the issue. We really need um, a freedom to be able to operate. No journalist can operate in an environment which is not free. As a journalist, I am very scared writing things that I think the government will raise eyebrow. And for this administration to consider it necessary to have everything, to begin to look at 
the freedom of those who practice their arts of journalism is something that needs to be commended. The, in, the previous, in the past, we have not had it like this, that government is coming out to celebrate the war press, uh, press freedom day. It is something that we need to commend. And government should also take a further step to ensure that this freedom is really free. We are faced with environmental crisis, so it is another opportunity for the government to make the environment conducive for journalists to practice their profession. Like in, um, you know, before now, in war situation, you used to know that, we used to know that journalists and maybe some humanitarian workers were protected, but these days it's no more like that. And even in Nigeria, where you go for assignment and you see the law uh, enforcement officer harassing journalists, they are there to do their own work, and the journalists are there to do their own work. But they'll be harassing journalists, and if you don't have a strong cameraman, you may not get what you went there to do. So this is another time for us to press on the government, just as the theme for 2024 says. Let them give us an environment that is conducive for us to do our work as journalists. Welcome back. This is still uh, Nigeria Today. And we're looking at uh, uh, press. Today, is, of course, is a press, uh, World Press Freedom Day. And we're looking at press and environment. And, of course, I have uh, uh, a lady, a veteran here in the studio, and, of course, one uh, a gentleman via Zoom. Now, uh, Moji had quite a lot of things that uh, people had to say there. Mm -hmm. Now, what would you say to some of the... How would you react to some of the issues raised there? Yes. Um, some, somebody mentioned yes. conducive environment, environment for journalists. Yes, conducive environment is important. Mm. You, you find out that uh, uh, during events that journalists are duly invited mm. to cover, you, um, there's harassment, like mm. um, Bassi said there on, in that report. Mm. But then again, you have to assert yourself. Mm. You are as important as uh, who wants to keep um, some measure of security around. But then again, why were you invited to ensure that uh, you can reel out uh, the messages or the important uh, um, information that is needed for the general public? As much as I would say that, yes, we are uh, uh, journalists a lot of times, we are at the dangerous uh, dangerous end mm. because of our work. Uh, there's mistrust because people don't even be, they, be, they even believe sometimes that we're exaggerating uh, a situation, a crisis situation, mm. instead of seeing us as um, part of the society who also uh, are eager for, uh, for security around. Uh, the journalist, I must say, is ultimate. That's what I call us. You, and you must see yourself as an ultimate. And you, so you must be able to be fearless, to be brave, mm -hmm. to be courageous, to do your job. Mm -hmm. But then again, it's also important that um, an, uh, you know, an environment conducive for practice is maintained. But we can also call for that. Mm -hmm. And now, if I have time, I'd let you know some of the experiences that we had, I mean, I had during my time. Uh, we were trying to eradicate polio and you go to very aggressive communities that won't allow you but you, you once you know the journalist now becomes the arbiter so to speak and you must be familiar with the environment a lot of us and you know so we load it on it and they feel that oh no we don't need you after all we must make an, ourselves an essential uh, uh, tool for development mm -hmm. but you must also know your environment if there's, I mean, if, if for example, there's uh, gunfire all over the place, there must be protection for the, for the media. Mm -hmm. If, for example, you cover the war zone, there must be protection for you. And a lot of times, there's no protection for, for the journalist. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you have to listen to, you know, get your stories from second or third party because the environment does not allow you to practice uh, ethically. But I think for me, the message will be, no matter what the situation is, mm -hmm. let the ethics of the profession see you through. That way you're building yourself. You become believable. You become the, the journalist to go to. But um, we're not getting that. We are, a lot of us shy away from it. And most importantly, you must also I, I said that at the very beginning. You mm. must assert yourself as the one to go to. Okay. You must, yes. And, and, and please, journalism is not about lie. Journalism is about telling it the way it is. And so don't make up your own stories. <laughs> 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 so, but, but, but I think that the journalist, 
the practice has done so well over the years in spite of the challenges that we face on on everyday basis but i think that when you check your facts your facts will see can may see you through it all now, uh, Mr. Ali, back to you, uh, having uh, heard quite a lot of things, uh, what you had to say here about uh, some of the challenges uh, journalists face. And uh, of course, uh, you know, some of them over the years have been able to brace up to it. Now, how important is it for us to have, uh, you know, uh, one, a conducive environment for uh, journalists and of course, journal responsible journalism? Mm -hmm. The environment may not, depending on how you look at it, an ideal environment may not be feasible. You have to work with what you have, what is available. And an ideal environment will be the one that, you, for example, there will be a sufficient power. There will be energy. Energy is cheap. Uh, means of communication is also readily available. Work tools are readily available. But then, these are ideal conditions ideal condition beyond what uh my senior colleague there said uh being assertive also the limitation uh there is a lot of gap on the part of young journalists i see a lot of gap uh, gap in knowledge in skills in understanding the terrain and in lack of mentorship because i see a lot of young journalists uh not being properly mentored and then listing all these limitations. How can you be assertive when you don't know the environment very well? When you don't understand, like she said, this example she gave in eradication of polio, unless you know the cultural environment itself, there are environments, there are certain cultures that don't believe that actually polio even exists. Till this moment, there are people who are resistant to that. So these are some of the challenges some are surmountable they can be surmounted by the individual journalists by improving their skills by improving their knowledge and the others also by uh, getting the right work tools for example in these days of digital media is certainly uh, so old school not to rely on uh, internet for example to send in your messages you understand this are something that you can surmount uh, but then what about energy It's a power, which has been at the heart of uh, uh, operations of any uh, media organization or any journalist? So these challenges, some of them, like I said, they, mount, they can be surmounted. Some of them, you just have to work with what you have. You have to improvise depending on this, what confronts you. I'll, thank you. Now, <laughs> I want you to, you know, talk to, uh, you know, some of the, the, will I say, the younger generation mm -hmm. of journalism, mm -hmm. journalists. Now, you know, quite a lot of things. Like he mentioned mentorship. Mm -hmm. uh, some, somehow, I want to agree with him that uh, we are lacking that, mm -hmm. uh, you know. Uh, so, talk to journalists, yes, I'll, I'll you know, just about... Uh, say that mentorship is very important, mm -hmm. but um, you can only mentor a mentee mm -hmm. that is ready to be mentored. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, I have some, well, uh, particularly in my passion beat, I call it the health beat, that are ready to be mentored. And some of them actually come up to you and say, listen, I can't do this job. I, I don't have the kind, of the kind of strength that you have. So this is not magic. Your passion must also be, uh, you must examine your passion. Do I want to be a journalist or just any other thing or are you just here because you think it's it's glamour mm. it is particularly on television yes glamour glamour mm. and knowledge you must read a lot of us are lazy we don't mm. read i say to my mentees you have to read you have to trend i must be able to ask you questions and you are able you know to speak and write from the point of knowledge it's important i think uh, my my brother there has also emphasized on that we can't be lazy on this job you mm -hmm. must your knowledge must you know must be so broadened that on any subject mm -hmm. you can you can take on anybody on any thank, any thank interviewee you. 
interesting. On any subject. Thank you very much. <laughs> we can go on and on about <laughs> yeah, we it. We really can go on and on <laughs> and on. Uh, at this point, I'll wrap up today's episode of Nigeria Today. Uh, a very big thank you to uh, own NTA veteran broadcaster, Mojima Kunjola. Thank you so much for, you for sparing your time. Me. Thank you for inviting <laughs> And also the managing director of the news agency of Nigeria, Ali Muhammad Ali, who joined us via Zoom. Thank you so much for your thank time. Thank you, Gary. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for having me. Thank you. And thank you for being part of the program. I am your carrier, Clinton. Goodbye. <laughs>